Welcome to Women in the Arena podcast, the podcast celebrating women doing extraordinary things in plain sight. I'm your host, Audra Egan, and our mission is to elevate the value, strength, and resilience each woman brings to the world. Without further delay, let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome in, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me again this week. You know, this season, we've done some really interesting episodes, some hard ones, some ones that are a little bit scary. We've talked about money and depression, suicide, death of a child, and racism. And now we're coming to the big one. We're going to talk about sex today. You knew what was going to happen eventually. So today is the day. And when you listen today, We're going to talk about a tour that's coming through North America. And somehow I have convinced my guest to kick off her national tour here in Arizona in July. So there will be more updates coming, but we have an event that we're going to be kicking off July 2nd. Be on the lookout for more details, and I can't wait for you to be there. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome and everyone, and thank you for joining me again today. I don't think you're ready for my guest today. She is a force of nature. So I'm going to tell you to sit down, buckle up, hang on, and just simply enjoy the ride. And fair warning, if you're offended by strong language or talking about sex or want to listen to this, maybe you want to use earbuds. Maybe not. You do you. But we're going to go there. We're definitely going to go there today. Today's guest, I am joined by Lou Featherstone, and she is an influencer on Instagram. Her entire platform is about self-love and self-love revolution and life after 50 for women that it's false that it stops. The reality is that it's absolutely the beginning and the beginning of whatever you want to create about it. Lou is here today to talk about her upcoming tour, her platform, and what her initiative is in this life. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you Lou Featherstone. Lou, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. What an introduction. I need you just to come around and follow me at all day and introduce me to people all day like that. <laughs> you on. I will do that all the time. Because I because I like I like to introduce people the way that I see them. And part of my platform is to make sure that everybody knows how amazing they really are. And that's oh, how okay. I see you. I see you as amazing and remarkable and a game changer, and trying to change the world one woman at a time, just like me. That's the bloody plan. That's the bloody plan. Let's go, girls. Uh, (laughs) Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Like I said, everybody, buckle up. Hang on. This is going to be a lot of fun. (laughs) So let's get into it. First of all, Lou, you are an influencer, an accidental influencer. So how did this start? How did Lou and Luland start? Well, Lou and Luland has taken many forms over the years, I think. But it's start, Instagram just started really as, you know, pictures of a salad or coffee and uh, sort of developed really. I started doing a bit more styling stuff. And then I started to think, well, maybe I could make a living out of the styling stuff. And that then led to doing vintage shopping tours of Portland, which then led to me buying way too much vintage, which then led to me starting Lou and Lou Land Rent My Wardrobe, where I'd invite women to come and rent my clothes for events or parties or vacations or just to step out their comfort zone, try something new. I've got quite a wacky wardrobe. Wacky. Oh, my God, I sound like a nana. I got an interesting collection of clothes in my wardrobe, people. You have an eclectic <laughs> collection of clothes. They're awesome. It's funny because I get most, I'm mostly busy at Christmas with rentals, but also at Halloween because people come and rent my clothes <laughs> for costume parties. And I'm like, oh, mother 
motherfuckers. These are my actual clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually how this started because people wanted to rent things for the school auction there's quite a school auction um culture in portland there's big fancy themed auctions every year and um a pta hit me up and said would you we're doing an au- a disco themed auction would you put rent any of your jumpsuits out so i was like yeah so i sort of put all the 70s stuff out bought a couple of cheap bottles of plonk from trader joe's and some hummus and a carrot invited everyone round they all rented my clothes i literally dressed pretty much the whole local elementary school auction and so rent my wardrobe sort of sprung up from that and then i thought when i set it up that people would want to do it by mail order an order from the website but actually women wanted to come and see what I'd got or try it on or see if there was alternatives there was you know they were worried about sizing so I quickly created I sort of put a lick of paint on this random area we have in the house that we rent in Portland here and um turned it into this sort of like crazy wardrobe and now people come I've I've dressed a bride who was eloping to New York she went off in gold cowboy boots (laughs) (laughs) I've I've I rented a whole wardrobe. Someone went, they went for a whole week in Jamaica. They were going for a wedding. So they took bathing suits and caftans and all sorts. It's so much fun that women just, I don't know, by renting it, but I also do, um, I do quite a lot of clothes swaps and it's quite a similar mentality because with a clothes swap, you're not having to pay for things and you're surrounded by a bunch of women at a clothes swap. Women just encourage each other to try something new. They're like, oh, go on, you know, try the yellow you know, pants and some, I can't wear yellow and they try them on and they're like, oh, maybe I can. And because it's free or because they've got someone encouraging them, um, they, they'll try it. And then they find out that they do enjoy the yellow pants and they can wear yellow and people compliment them on the yellow pants. So they really rather enjoy the whole experience. So it, that's the kind of, that's the beginning of what I try to do. And then I try to make it sort of slightly bigger and just encourage people to try new things in their life and, you know, be it style or fitness or, I don't know, life choices or even just what they wear to the supermarket. I think part of the reason I dress the way I dress is because it people talk to me all the time and I love that because I just meet the wildest people with who tell me things and it sparks conversations and they ask what I'm up to when I'm out in the street doing some ridiculous antic for a reel on Instagram. We always draw a crowd and people are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm online encouraging women to step out of their comfort zone and, you know, little... 80 year old ladies are going that's amazing dear good job (laughs) (laughs) but it's just about sparking a conversation and getting women talking sorry I you're gonna you're definitely doing that I'm sorry I talk ever so much I'm terrible on a podcast it nearly always gets ended up being a two-parter because I don't shut up you have to have some sort of signal (laughs) you're the oh my gosh you're the you're my favorite kind of guest so it's (laughs) awesome so I'm going to tell everybody first Pause this thing right now. Go to Instagram. Go to Lou and Lou Land. That is her handle. And go check out her her uh, Instagram page. I, you can see the outfits. You can see her antics. Uh, how I became uh, familiar with Lou is I was scrolling through my feed. And full disclosure, I was probably on a Zoom call. Sorry. I was probably <laughs> in a meeting, probably trying to pay attention and wasn't. Uh, and I was I was scrolling through my Instagram page, and I see this amazing woman who is larger than life, totally colorful, dancing on a table. I was like, who is this woman? Who is this woman? I need to meet her because, you know, I've, I've been known to dance on a bar or two uh, because it's fun. It's just fun. It's just fun. And then I find out that she's 50, and I'm like, and this was just months before I was going to turn 50. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And she was also amazingly fit and just really in touch with herself. And I was like, that's what I'm trying to do with myself. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm trying to do. So I was started following her and just the most amazing things that she is doing that has started to happen. And it was just such in line of what I'm trying to do. We're such kindred spirits of trying to have women embrace themselves fully and understand their full value and 
live out loud and live your full potential and not give a damn what anybody thinks. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. So this, so your Lou and Lou land and all your, your crazy clothes and in weird places. And by the way, there is a reel where she is naked on a, <laughs> on a bicycle <laughs> riding through a field. Um, and, and kind of like, kind of like that, the cover of that, the Queens album of, um, I think it was flat bottom girls or fat bottom girls. I think it was. So it kind of reminds me of that. So it's, it's hilarious, but please go check it out because it'll just make you smile. The funniest um, thing about that post was that I was, I was cycling through a cornfield in England, um, naked <laughs> and the comments are hilarious. The comments were like, I hope you haven't got a tick. Oh my God. I'm worried you've got ticks in your vagina I mean it was so <laughs> funny but people were most worried that I was going to get a tick and then I became really paranoid that I was going to get a tick look mercifully <laughs> no ticks in my vagina <laughs> well thank god for that thank god for that. Did, and it was it was actually very liberating but the funniest thing was I was cycling through the field and I was heading towards a church there's a tiny like village church with an English flag blowing it when it was so British it was unbearable and I was like the closer and closer I got to the church I was like in a minute now I'm going to end up in the graveyard of the church naked on a bike and my dad's an actual is a vicar so the whole thing was just making me chuckle something chronic and then my poor friend who's behind me trying to catch up with me with the videos just dying laughing I was it was a funny day <laughs> Oh, so Somebody much. needs to video who's videoing you just to capture the whole thing because that sounds just as funny as the actual event. So my best friend, who uh, is who I call the Duchess because she's Dutch and posh, um, follows me everywhere. I mean, Lou and Ludland would literally be nothing without her. She just she's you know I'm like the light's amazing or it's raining really heavily. Can we go and jump in some puddles, please? And you know she turns up ten minutes later. She's I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm moving back to England um, in a few months and without her I really don't know because she what I'll do because she just knows the behind the scenes shots. She's all over the behind the scenes. But now we've got to a point where, and I, she was at the gym filming me the other day for a reel I did. And another friend took a picture of her lying on the ground getting getting me. And I was like, it's now got to the stage where we need a behind the scenes for the behind the scenes because it's just, <laughs> it's like a circus now. <laughs> but I actually prefer my behind the scenes. I prefer the behind the scenes almost than the, the finished product. There's always something hilarious happens. I guarantee it. If we're miserable, I'm just like, let's just go wander the streets and with some clothes and something will happen. <laughs> and see what happens. I or call wandering it Lou and Lou with a pink Christmas tree. I call it absolutely joy. I call it Lou yeah. and Lou landing myself. I'm like, I've got a Lou and Lou land myself today. <laughs> Give myself. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the reason people connect with me is because what I'm not. I have to go with how I feel. There's, I, I'm not a content planner. You know, you watch all these people constantly asking me about growing their Instagram and things that I don't have a science for it other than being myself. Um, I um, I don't plan my content. I've got a rough idea. You know, if something's, um, yeah, and, that, and this year I bought a pink Christmas tree to lug around with me and called her Joy. Um, just to add, <laughs> just to add to the pressure. It was hilarious lugging this bloody tree around me in the duchess oh god it was hilarious but it created so much joy everywhere we went I had it in my I had it in a little sports trolley I was trundling it around places we were on the tram you know people were like <laughs> oh my god I love the tree you know it's so <laughs> funny when I'm when I'm out shooting you know people are leaning out of cars yelling my name um stopping asking what's going on I had a little old couple the other day stood watching for about 20 minutes you know I've had I have I often have little girls coming up in you know especially I remember once doing a reel and I had my pink gown my huge pink dressing gown with the feathers um and a big tiara over my sparkly sunglasses and I was walking down the road in the wind with it flapping and this this little eight-year-old are you a princess and I was like yes I am she's will you be here tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) I can be and then the next day I was like should I be should I go I feel bad what if she's looking for the princess and I'm not there Oh dear, but yeah, sorry, I'm off on a tangent. How, how fun, though? How fun because you know you are influencing 
people to live out loud, even the little ones. I think that's mm-hmm. that's what you should do is you should influence them at a young age so then they don't have to go through all of the emotional gyrations that that women of our age have had to go through because of you know just stuff that we've inherited this this traditional garbage that doesn't sad. fit us it, here's it's a sad it, yeah here's a not here's a not fun fact you might not know i got uh, i got fired from my job as a track and field coach at middle school <laughs> yeah <laughs> for getting my bum out on the internet like yeah, I'd done it for, I think I'd done four or five seasons. I'd done it for a few years. I coached uh, cross country in the winter and then I did track and field for local middle school program. And they all called me Awesome Coach Lou. It was bloody brilliant. I loved it. And I was Chris CrossFit Kids Coach and Teens Coach for quite a while as well when we first got here. And um, then they found out I put my bum on the internet and I got fired. I'm like, I'm just out here trying to empower women. But it's just, you know, ugh, it was frustrating. It was also good because, you know, I've gone on to do other things now, but it was really hurtful at the time. I'm like, uh, I'm a badass role model here. Really? You're offended by my middle-aged ass? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I mean, I, they should learn, kids should learn to be out and and free and enjoy themselves and, and be strong in who they are. I mean, isn't that the point? Exactly. I mean... You know, for example, with my son, you know, I've always, I mean, he's grown up around, I worked for social services for many years with families in crisis and worked in the family homes and saw, you know, a lot of, a lot of things. I grew up with a mum who was a probation officer, um, you know, so we grew up having, you know, very open conversations about things. He'd ask me what I was doing with these families and, you know, we'd talk about, you know, how hard it is being a parent and how, you know, some people just don't have, had bad parents themselves. But the sad thing is that a lot of those parents didn't realise that, the way they were being parented was shitty. And so you're in this cycle. So we grew up talking about really hard things and having hard conversations. And I let him watch reality TV, but probably way too early. It was our little, it's always been our guilty pleasure. We watched really age inappropriate things like, you know, Love Island and Temptation Island. But when he was about 10, it was probably (laughs) early. But we've always had a really open conversation because I think, you know, working with all the families in crisis, the you can't stop, you know, kids are going to smoke weed and they're going to shag their girlfriends and it's going to happen. We did it. They do it. But what I want to do is for him to talk about it. But yeah, I, you know, I'm just all about having open conversations because there's this, and there's no shame about it. There's no secrecy about it. They do know too many things too early. I think these days they have access to so much. They need more guidance. I think these kids now have access to things they shouldn't see. And it's, you know, you have to talk about these things and and guide them. All you can do is give them the tools. And but if you're talking about it, at least it's they know that you hope they can come to you about it. So that's the kind of way I've tried to operate with Oscar. Um, you know, also his mother is a vibrator advocate online, so there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's not many secrets. <laughs> that's actually a perfect segue into your your tour that's coming up, but your entire platform, which is the self-love revolution. And that means everything. Whatever self-love means for you, it's a total encompassing thing. That's mm-hmm. that's the living out loud. That's living in your purpose. That's trying new things. That's getting out of your comfort zone. It's also not having any shame about pleasuring yourself. I told you we were going to talk about sex. Here we are. So <laughs> it, it, it. it's all it's all about that and and talking about things that are completely natural. Lou, tell us a little bit about this self-love re- le- that's easy for me to say. Self-love <laughs> revolution. It's where it came about and your purpose. I mean, the self-love revolution has grown with my, it's a very personal journey um, that I'm on, that I'm dragging everyone else along with, because the more I talk about it, the more I realize we're all in the same boat. I'm not, you know, I've probably got a few more clothes than the average person. um, And I just found a way, I don't know, I found, I kind of feel like I found my mission, if you like. I found, I've tried doing styling and I love that. And that brought a lot of women, um, curious women to the platform. And that was fun. And, you know, for a long time, I was very focused on my message of sustainability, um, which is still incredibly important to me. Um, And then, and that's half of the reason why I set up Rent My Wardrobe. And then these women started coming 
And I started doing the shopping tours and just meeting women in real life and realizing what an impact you can have um, just through little changes in your life. And then when COVID hit, and obviously rent, rent my wardrobe sort of ground to a very fast halt. It was just starting to make money and, and get somewhere. Um, I turned to doing lockdown with Lou and Lou Land online and just, uh, I did a lot more styling, fun styling stuff, but I also did, you know, lots of workouty bits and I did lots of confidence stuff and lots of fun stuff just to make people laugh because we were all pissed off being locked down. And women just started coming. And then because... I open up, people open up to me. So then I you can I really get a sense of what the community was enjoying and what they were sharing with their friends and what they were resonating with. And it really is just the everyday stuff that I do. You know, oh, this week, for example, I posted, I woke up and I was like, I slept all through the night. I slept eight hours and I couldn't believe it. it was the first time I've done that for years. I literally rolled over, picked up the phone and went, well, good morning, motherfuckers. I don't mean to show <laughs> off, but I just slept for an entire night. Uh, oh my God. And I got no one to tell. Normally I'd have rolled over and gone, oh my God, I've got no one to tell except a pile of pillows. I'm like, I'll tell the in- internet instead. And I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments and women going you fucker lucky you I'm so jealous <laughs> but mostly women going oh my god lucky you congratulations like genuinely like you lucky thing also I'm a little bit jealous but in terms of the self-love revolution uh, it's growing I, I'm growing in love for myself and the changes that I see and I feel I just I've always been the same if I'm doing something and I'm enjoying it I want everyone to do it as well you know I go somewhere wicked I'm like right next time and we're going all going together and we're having an event you know it's just I don't know I just feel so many women need connection and need permission I you know it, it makes me sad that we women need permission for things and I some I don't know how I do it, but that's the sort of, you know, that seems to be what I I can do for people. And it just feels right. Once I'd found my voice, I did a I did a course about three years ago and it was an amazing course. It was about uh vlogging for your business with um a company called a lady called me, um, who and it's called iStorm. And she coaches women to, you know, she does everything from the lighting to your sound and practical things for increasing your visibility online for your business. She really encouraged me because up till then, I'd never really spoken on camera. I couldn't stand my voice. I hate my teeth. And she really helped me unpick all of the things that I was struggling with. But even when I'd finished the course, I still couldn't quite find my voice. I didn't feel I didn't feel I had anything worth saying that anybody wanted to hear. But then once I started doing the confidence stuff and I started doing more positivity things and self-love stuff, and I started to find my confidence, I was like, fuck, this is because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is, this is, I found my voice now for the right thing. That's great. It is. And, and I, you know, but it, this is where I need to be. So then that gave me the confidence. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense because I, I'm right there with you. I'm totally mm-hmm. right there with you because, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've colored within the lines, like I told you earlier, for a really long time, done mm-hmm. what I'm supposed to do. I put myself last because I had other priorities were pressing that, that needed me my job, my husband, my life. kids, the house, the life. life needed me. And I was mm-hmm. on the bottom of the list or if I made the list at all, mm-hmm. but something happens. And I've talked to many women, many women that this is, that they all agree and say, yes, somewhere between middle forties, early fifties, something mm-hmm. clicks in your head and you suddenly go, I'm not doing this anymore. I, I'm not putting myself last anymore. I've done my tour of duty. I'm mm-hmm. not putting myself last. And there's something that bubbles up inside you where you finally get in line with your voice. That you, It's been there the whole time. You've just been yeah. stifling it. And then once you find her, you can't shut her up. You can't shut her up, right? And then I'm like, this is amazing. This feels amazing. Everybody needs to know that these are things that they can do. I'm a real person living a real life, going through real life shit. I'm not just fancy. I'm not just fancy pants prancing around showing off. I'm like, this is, I, you know, come in and see what's possible. You know, give it a try. Um, you don't have to prance around in gold pants, but give it a try because that's also quite fun. But um, 
you know, so the mission has grown and grown and I just, and I love doing it online, but I also want to meet the people. I love meeting people. I love, I love people I don't even like because they find, I find them just as equally as fascinating. And I've also, I saw someone last night, I haven't seen for two years because of COVID. We were back at lacrosse and I was back on the, you know, with one of the, I hadn't seen this mum for a couple of years. And I, she said, you know, how are you doing? And I said, I'm okay. You know, there's a lot going on. I've got, you know, some major life, um, big life you know mum's died I'm getting divorced my son's leaving home I'm emigrating from America leaving all my friends and such an amazing place there's a lot there's a lot there's war going on you know um and then I go and buy a bus to talk you know and and declare a U.S. <laughs> tour I mean I've got a lot I've either got I just would do, I could do with a day when nothing happens, you know, I, it's either really amazing or really awful. It's literally dreams coming true and actual real heartbreak. There's sort of no Bob and I just want to go to, I want to go to Trader Joe's, do a shop <laughs> and lie on the sofa <laughs> for a day. <laughs> but what I've done is be able to find a, a way to even enjoy the bad bits in some ways, like ride out the bad bits take them for what they are and just know that this is part of my journey and to be able to do that is just really helping people like how are you and I was like I've got a new therapist I found a place for where you know even on a bad day I just know I just got to keep going I talk to myself in my head you know I make sure I follow the right people online that keep me motivated as well um and you know, I keep the, you know, the fitness up obviously is a massive part of, you know, my day to day mental health, you know, but it's, you know, it's really scary. I've just, you know. Yeah. Cause you're putting your whole self out there. You, I mean, everything there's, you put everything out online, good, bad, um, crazy, heartbreaking, everything. But I think that's why people are connecting with you. That's absolutely why I connected with you because I saw everything about you. I saw this amazing, uh, incredible, vivacious woman that was just out there in in that amazing pink dress. I know exactly which dress you're talking about, <laughs> and I I would feel like a princess in that dress too. Uh, but you're you're out there, but you also shared you know you've shared the sadness in your in your life with the death of your mother, which was awful, and I mean, and the the time that led up to it as you know it was just it was tragic, and I could feel for you, and I could feel the sadness of the separation from your husband and mm -hmm. the mo one of the most profound things that I saw that you had put on your platform was the show that you did with Style Like You and that's if you haven't seen it I, I definitely recommend you guys all go see the show that they put out called What's Underneath I've actually seen several of the episodes mm -hmm. but the one well, that Lou was on and it it's amazing. It's amazing. And the one that Lou is on, and here's the background to it, is that they ask you these very intimate questions and you're sitting on a stool. And every time that they ask you a question, you have to remove an article of clothing. Now you're not sitting there naked at the end. You're in, you're in your bra and underwear, or as Lou would say, in your knickers. And, <laughs> you know, cause I mean, the whole point is to be vulnerable and be naked emotionally. And, like I said, the most profound thing I saw was as she was talking, there was this realness to it and this sadness that we all feel. And it was, um, it was emotional for me and it was beautiful for me. And I, I was like, oh my goodness, there's another woman out there that feels all the stuff that I'm feeling. <laughs> and why aren't we talking about it? Which is why I, mm -hmm. why I connected with Lou and said, let's talk about it. Let's so talk about us, it. Yeah, let, tell us about that experience of what's underneath and and how how it looked emotionally draining, but it also looked really freeing at the same time. Oh, it was quite incredible. I was so nervous. I was really honored to be asked. They'd interviewed some quite um, amazing people. And so I was, you know, I happened to have been in LA. I'd been invited to a fashion show. So I was all sort of like, we'd uh, me and the Duchess had been down for the weekend. We were on such a high. Um, and it was the... I headed off. I had a nightmare Uber driver who was really mean to me. <laughs> she kept giving me death stares. And I had a really hot coffee in my hand. And um, she was really 
she really didn't want me to have the coffee. She was like, what are you going to do with that? I was like, drink it. But it turns out she didn't have any cup holders in the back of the car. Anyway, I spilled the coffee. She made me spill the coffee with her death stares. I was supposed to be recording myself a style like you on the way, describing my feelings in the cab. And I'm like, getting death stares from the Uber driver. That's how I feel. And I said, it spilled coffee all over my white pants and trousers. And so I arrived in such a pickle for this interview that I was so nervous about. And I very rarely get nervous. So that was like, ah, okay, this means it's good. Try and remember that. Um, and then I had to start in my mask. So I was in a right old tangle and I'd got I got my mask with tassels. I had tassely sunglasses on. I was in such a pickle. I could All I could think about was the brown stain on my trousers. But the reason I was most nervous about it was, was really because it was going to be the first time that I talked about leaving Guy. And they had asked me in advance if I was, wanted to talk about it. And we had been separated for over a year at that point, but I hadn't. Out of respect for him, he's a very private man. But for me, I'm a talker. And so, you know, for healing, I need to talk about it. I think everything I put on the platform is how I feel. It's always a message to myself. You know, I'm like, come on, motherfuckers, we can do this. I'm really just saying, come on, motherfucker, you can do this, love. <laughs> you know. And then everyone replies, yeah, you can, yeah, you can. And I'm like, yes, I can. Okay, fine my life is either that sadness and like that deep, deep life altering sadness, or it's really exciting. So it's, it's trying to articulate that, be respectful to him because, you know, I do, I value our marriage, I value our marriage. Um, and I value his friendship and obviously he's Oscar's dad. Um, you know, and we, we're trying to do this a little bit differently and show, show, hopefully, you know, I'm like, we could help people see that there are other ways of doing this. Yeah, that interview has actually been quite life changing, going back to style like you. Um, it's been really quite life changing, it's had quite a profound effect on my life, because it's opened up an awful lot of things. And also was a massive step towards me just going, I have to keep talking about this, and I have to keep sharing. And it's really important. And I feel like a complete wanker some days just sort of you know, I'm on a mission. Someone said to me, it's a movement. You're a movement. And I went, oh my God, I love that. And that, but that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm a cross between Billy Graham and Priscilla Queen of the Desert, sort of preaching self-love and vibrators from the top of my bus. <laughs> Back to that, the uh, What's Underneath episode. It was, it was that episode and you said that it was life-changing. It was profound. Well, you actually, in that interview, you said something that was life changing for me. I should I shouldn't say life changing. It was perspective changing because mm. you talked about menopause in mm -hmm. that conversation, and you know I, I have not made any secret of my age and what's going on. I'm fifty. This happens. You know, life happens. I don't get to stop this. This is part of me. And mm -hmm. I am starting to go through menopause and all its lovely gifts, which oh, is Laura. you can't sleep through the night. You, you, I finally understand the the phrase of your own personal summer because you, all of a sudden, <laughs> and and I need to describe this because I know that there are, I do have some amazing male community members and thank I, I thank you guys all the time because you are small in number but you are mighty and you are loyal. So. I, <laughs> hold on guys hold on yeah so hold this time. is what a this is what a hot flash feels like it feels like someone has turned the hell fire on inside your body turned it on blast and left it there for sometimes it's 10 seconds sometimes it's a minute sometimes it's three and it turns it on blast and you are burning from the inside out you cannot get cool. Hat. Yeah, it's awful. And then you're you're sweating and it's ridiculous. And you can't stop it. There's nothing you can do to stop it. You could try and take hormones. You can try and do this. But everything has a side effect. You you don't get out of this scot-free. <laughs> so it, it's You have to laugh. You it's have really to laugh. It's really quite There's comical. There's just no other choice. You just, you have to roll with it and laugh. And before I saw this interview, I was like dreading all of these things things that were happening to me because they were totally out of my control. There was nothing I could do about it. But then Lou said some amazing things that completely changed my perspective. I'm not going to spoil it. So I want you to tell everybody what you said about menopause and why it's perspective changing. I mean, 
I just think we're programmed to um, to dread change. You know, everybody thinks change is all change, all change. Change is the best thing. And, you know, the menopause is called the change or, you know, a midlife crisis. But it doesn't need to be those things. Yeah, it's a complete shakeup of of life. And I think, you know, the reason it hits us around, you know, these 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 changes in our in our minds and in women particularly around late 40s, early 50s is you know, we have we have changed since the day we got our first period. We our bodies change every month. You know, our tits grow, our hips widen, we bleed for God's sake. We adapt every month. We have to change our knickers. We, you know, we're we're we constantly thinking about our periods, and you know, and our but our bodies start changing and accommodating, and then you know they accommodate to give birth, and then they come, you know, and we just but women genetically i just think have a gene in them that we just pivot and spin and pivot and spin and pivot and spin you know you make your kid what sausages and chips for three nights dinner and it's their favorite dinner you make it on the fourth dinner they've changed their mind you're like fine okay shepherd's pie i don't know you just it's what women do um and it's used, nearly always based around making things better for everybody else. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's, it's also part of the job. And, you know, you're so weary and worn down, you know, when the kids are little, you know, you just get on with it. You do what you've got to do just to keep going. And there's absolutely, you know, you can't be fighting every day. Some days it's just about survival. Most days then it's just about survival. But then you get to a point where the kids have started to grow and they've started to maybe leave home or are thinking about leaving home. And so women naturally just go, OK, what's next? All right, they're going. So, well, then what am I going to do? And you turn around, you look at your husband of the last 25 years and you're like, Tam, it's just me and you for the next 25 years. <laughs> and women are like, nah, 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 nah. And nearly every husband I know wants to sit on the sofa or go to a car show. And every woman's like, I am going to go climb a mountain or I think I'd rather you know hang on a minute hang on a minute I've got time for me the kids have gone okay and then you start reflecting back on you know life maybe a little bit and thinking wow how did I let myself go or you know or looking back going hmm I used to be really good at that I haven't had time for that so we're like okay I'm like looking forward to this let's go it's changed brilliant and actually you know, it's what you make it. Everything's what you make it. You know, some, of course, things are out of control. Uh, some things are out of our control and life, life gets in the way of a lot of things. But your mindset of how you, you know, how you tackle things is everything to, for me. You know, you can tell yourself anything, really, if you're honest. Um, so you can even tell yourself that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, you saying that, it was just so it was so perspective changing for me that I stopped dreading it. Does it still mm -hmm. suck? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. It absolutely sucks. I just don't mm -hmm. dread it anymore. And mm -hmm. I and get I, on with it. And I look, and that's what I've managed to do with life and all the hard things that I'm going through. I just, you know, does it still suck? Yeah, of course it does, but it's just, it's part of it. And I know it's a really, it sounds such a cliche, you know, you've got one life and la, la, la. If I spend the next three months being consumed with just the, just all the things, the hard things that are going on, I'm going to waste these last few weeks I have with my son before he leaves home. You know, I'm going to waste the last few weeks I got with my ex-husband who I've had spent half my life with. You know, I don't want to spend those days fighting with him. It's already all hard enough, you know. So, oh, gosh, now you see, let me have a little cry. It's just got to be, today you just got to feel it all. <laughs> and in and know that tomorrow is a better day or, you know, things will change. Nothing stays the same. Um but you've got, you know, menopause or the change or this midlife period is a really good excuse for shaking shit up and yes, trying some new stuff and see what happens, you know. And that can be wearing a sparkly cardigan or a sparkly jacket to the supermarket on a Wednesday and just seeing what happens. But I bet you, you get five really nice compliments from people and you'll love it and you'll feel great. And then you, next time you see someone wearing a good outfit, you go, nice outfit and you'll make their day too. And then that's how a little, and that's how it works. But, and that's the best. That is absolutely the best. Cause when I start, I started doing this on, on purpose. When I see a woman that um, has a really cute 
dress on or her hair is adorable, I will stop her and say, you know what? That's really cute. I just want to let you know that you're beautiful. She I just do it randomly. She's made an effort for herself. You know, whether you compliment her or not, she's made herself feel cute. But I guarantee nothing bad's going to come of you complimenting somebody on how they look. And then hopefully they go on and do it to somebody else because it made them feel good. So funny, I remember a couple of summers ago, I went home for a trip. And I'm so used to, because Americans are really good at saying nice outfit or, you know, British people spent all day looking at the floor, the ground and avoiding eye contact. And we had a day we had a day out in London and um, you know, we were going on an open top bus tour. We'd gone back to England for a visit and we were pretending to be tourists in London. So we going on this open top bus tour and we were going around all the sites, you know, Buckingham Palace and Trafalgar Square. And so I was like, right, I'm bringing a good outfit, Oscar. We're gonna get, you know, Oscar, you need to take good pictures of me around London. So I'm wearing a really good outfit. Not one compliment all day. I said, well, you know what? No one's complimented me all day. And he went, well, maybe it's just not a good outfit, mum. And I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck off. It's a brilliant outfit. But this is, British people are just like miserable. <laughs> Americans are really good at that. So when I go back to Britain, that's going to be my main campaign is getting everybody to tell each other that they look good. Yes, absolutely. Because, I mean, you can live out loud in your full Lou and Lulandia in Portland and no one looks twice because you know there's a reason why they call keep Portland weird for a reason <laughs> that is legit I was and then here. I was thrown here for sure <laughs> for 100 percent and, and then but then you go back to the UK and everybody's buttoned up and you know stiff upper lip and the whole thing and I'm sure it's going to feel very confining but it'll be a good oh, time and hilarious to watch you shake them up no, there's some wild women there. And there's some wild women there. Um, yeah, stiff up a lip, hilarious. I uh yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be be a strange experience emigrating home. Do you emigrate That'll home? Be- Is that what I'm yeah. doing? Am I emigrating home? Yeah, I am. Um yeah. yeah. I haven't even got a British bank account. I got I got a lot to sort out. <laughs> so Lou, you are taking you're literally taking your show on the road. Which is so exciting because you are going to be rolling through Arizona and I get to meet you in person, which is going to be awesome. So tell us about Lou and Luland tour and where you're going, what you're doing and this party in LA. I mean, what is going on for you? I mean, this is basically your, your hurrah before you, you go over the pond. I mean, I could just think, I could have thought, you've got an awful lot going on, Lou. There's a lot of emotions, things of running, you know, this is a pretty big deal. Um, why don't you just pack up your stuff and get on a plane and go home? But no, I couldn't do that. And just, you know, process and deal. No, 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 no. No, I decided to buy a vintage RV from 1983 and take it on a tour around America to meet as many women as I possibly can before I leave. I mean, who doesn't do that? <laughs> Take my take it all out on the road. Live out loud. Literally. Makes perfect sense to me. I'm gonna I'm I mean, gonna leave this country and go to another one. I think I'll go on a tour. <laughs> I know. I somewhat I'm sure people will want to come. So I decided that I was just I don't know, and you know what? If, I'm just so excited for the people I'm gonna meet. When I went to pick her up, so I got one woman, one woman, I got a one way ticket down to Arizona to go and collect her when I bought her got out the Uber in the field where she was stored and took one look at her and literally sank to my knees and burst into tears and went, what on earth have I done? She's so big, but she's so amazing. She's so, I didn't actually realize quite what I bought. She's an absolute piece of American history. They only made 4,000 of them. She's made by the people who made the school buses, Bluebird. When she was built as an RV, she's not a conversion, but she's absolutely huge. But because she's so rare, when I'm driving along, it's a bit like when I go to the supermarket in a good outfit, people are like speeding past me and waving out the window and honking their horn at me because she's so ace. And she needs sharing. So I decided, why don't I just travel around, see who I meet, um, but then do some events on the way. So I've decided to do events in San Francisco. There'll be one before I leave in Portland, or there'll be a few before I leave in Portland, I think. Um, There's going to be one in San Francisco. There's going to be one in LA, Austin, Nashville. And then the tour will finish in New York at the Vagina Museum on the 1st of October, which is World Menopause Day. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, um, obviously, where else would I finish? And then I shall ship the bus back to England and I shall continue my mission when I get home. I'm going to buy a field and do Lou and Lou Land positivity workshops out there. But what will happen is I'll roll into San Francisco and I, you can buy a ticket for the weekend. And I'm doing a little trial run down in LA at the beginning of April. Um, and you basically get a ticket to the whole weekend. And it's basically a Lou and Lou Land weekend. So there's going to be a clothes swap. There's going to be a party. There's going to be cocktail making. There's going to be a workout. There's going to be a hike. There's going to be an inspirational speaker of panel of speakers and women that I've I gather from lo- locally where I am, depending where I'm stopping on the tour, um, and through women I've met online and that I've done work with or just that I know of. And I'm going to connect with, obviously, women's groups in that area um, and local workout people um, and just have a massive fucking party for a weekend. It'll be like a roving festival. Um, they'll be dressing up. There's going to be photographers. It's going to be a blast for a whole weekend. And then I'll hit the road and head on to the next place. So it's like a road show, if you like. Um, so I'm super excited. But I'm also really nervous. It's like having a party and worrying that no one's going to come. <laughs> I don't think you mentioned the name of your bus. And I love the name of your bus and why you named her. Oh, well, she's called Susie after my mum, who was such a badass um, and also was a woman on her own mission. So that's and you know what? The best thing about it is and I didn't anticipate this was was people ask me all the time what she's called, obviously. And so I get to say she's Susie. And then people say, why? And I say, because it's named after my mum. So I get to talk about my mum all the time. And my dad calls her the spirit of Susie. Uh, she it's really it's really nice because I have little chats with her like I would have with my mom. <laughs> oh, that's so great. And she has her own theme song. Do you play Run Around Sue for in your bus? All the time. All the time. There's always tunes banging out. It's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> it's going to take. When does your when does your tour kick off? When is the official kickoff date of the tour? The official kickoff date is the 20th of June. So Oscar graduates on the 5th. So I didn't want to leave on the 6th because that seemed quite harsh. You've graduated by I'm leaving. So I've left in a week. <laughs> yeah, good um, luck. Yeah, good luck. I spoke to another was lacrosse season just started last night and I was sitting next to her, a mum on the bleachers. And I, she said, oh, I'm moving to Albuquerque. I was like, amazing. What are you doing there? And she went, weather's better. So I went, okay, fine. When, when are you leaving? She was like, the day after graduation. I was like... I did laugh. I was like, oh my God, all the mums are doing one. All the mums are running for the hills. Kids graduate, they're all off. Um, yeah, 20th of June. So it's, it's going to be about three and a half months. And I'm going to nip home in the middle. I've been invited to do a lecture at a very prestigious les- lecture festival in Wales, in in Europe, in um, the UK. So I'm going to park Susie after the LA. When I get to LA, I'll park the bus and then I'm going to nip home, do a lecture and then come back again. So the tour's, the tour's going crazy at this point. I don't even know. Lou, I have kept you for a long time today and it's because I've had so much fun with you. And I love, love your platform about being out there and and just supporting women and connecting with them because that is obviously what we all need right now is some connection Mm -hmm. and support and finding your community. And as it turns Mm -hmm. out, we're all going through similar things and we just need each other. So reach out to a stranger, make a friend. And Lou, you are doing magnificent work in, in the only way that you can do it. So I want to not only thank you for being here and give me your time, but I want to thank you for being brave enough to live out loud and encourage everybody else to do the same. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for the work you're doing too. See what happens. I know. Circle of magic. It is the craziest thing. I would never have met Lou had I not said yes to this crazy journey that I'm on. And I'm so glad that I did because it is living out loud and finding that voice changes your whole life and you never know what it'll take it, it where it'll take you and every day is an adventure and that's the really isn't that the amen whole point to that oh man so please <laughs> go check out Lou and Lou Land on Instagram she is a riot she will make you laugh 
She will she will make you have a good day out of a bad one. And she's real and authentic, and you will love her. Also, make sure that you go and check out her tour. Get a ticket if you can. Make sure that you come out and meet her because I promise you, you will not regret it. So thank you all again for being here and your support. And we'll see you again next time. That's our show. Thank you all so much for spending your time with me and continuing to support this show, this community, and our endeavor to change the world one interview at a time. If you have any ideas for a new show or for a guest that you'd like me to interview, please reach out to me at audra at womeninthearena.net. Thank you again for all of your support, and we'll see you again next time. so grateful for each and every one of you and your unwavering support and your continued belief in this movement that has become much bigger than me, much bigger than just a podcast. It has become this forward momentum that we are all doing together. If you are ready or you know somebody that is, that is ready to tell your story and share your value with the world, please connect with me. You can reach me at audra at womeninthearena.net. I am so honored and thankful that you will share your story with me, and I'll make sure that it is well taken care of. I will never stop thanking each and every one of you, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next week as we share another woman's story and we celebrate her doing extraordinary things in plain sight. We'll see you next time. This is just-